Hello everybody. Uh, in this tutorial, I'm going to be taking you through the face board for the MetaHuman creators. Um, so when you first open up one of these scenes, it may be a little overwhelming to see the amount of controls faced, uh, you, you know, you're faced with. Um, so I'm just going to break it down into different sections and hopefully it'll make it a little clearer to understand exactly what control does what and where it lies. Uh, it'll make things a little bit easier if you understand it a bit better. Um, so I'm going to start with one of the main controls you'll be using a lot, which is the jaw control. This control here in this yellow box underneath this face shape. Uh, that's another good thing to kind of bear in mind. The face is laid out in a way that these kind of reflect where the controls will be moving the face. So you can imagine this would be the mouth and the lips and corners and things. We've got the nose in the center, we've got the eyes and the eyebrows above it. Um, it's just try, to try and help you, you know, visually aid you to, to decide where you need to be looking for certain controls. But anyway, we'll um, get back to the jaw down here. Uh, so this one moves in the TY, so up and down, and left and right in the TX. Swing it around, and you can see it's got a lot of uh, secondary motion coming from like the ears and the jaw and all the rest of that sort of thing, so you don't have to worry about like mixing controls to get a nice just normal jaw open. Uh, the ones to the right of it, this one here, this is the jaw forward and back. So this is going to push the, the jaw back into the face or pull it forward like this. They can all be used, all these controls can be used together in varying degrees. They're all designed to be mixed. And the ones to the left and right, this is a jaw clench control. So you see at the side of the jaw there, it's kind of clenching the teeth together and creating this kind of a uh, tense look in the side of the face. This control should really only be used when the jaw is shut because it's a it's an impact of the teeth clenching together to create this kind of muscle tension around here. You wouldn't use this control when the jaw is open, it's just not how a face works. So I would reserve that for when the teeth are clenching together. Uh, this one down here is a jaw open extreme, which again is another one which I wouldn't really use in this this control unless the jaw is already at the maximum distance because then this one here then gives you some extra range if you need like a really big uh, scream or super shocked face or something like that and you're just not getting enough range from this one you have the jaw open extreme uh, and it actually has some different effects on the uh, cheeks around here you can see it kind of pushes them out and pulls the ears back it kind of just increases the extreme shape of a jaw open Okay, that's uh, pretty much all there is to say about the jaw. I'm going to move on to the corner controls next. So these are going to be things that are going to move the corners up, out, and down. Um, I'm going to start with the corner pull, which are these two here. And if you look at the lines and the trajectories of the corners, uh, of the controls, sorry, and the direction they go, it kind of gives you an idea of where the corners are going to be going. So in this, we're going up and diagonal. So it's a, it's a wide and lifting control. It gives you a classic kind of smile shape. So I seem to have left a little bit of jaw forward on there. Bring that back to zero. Uh, so yeah, we've got a big, nice, wide smile with this control here. So moving them together gives you a symmetrical one, but they can be used asymmetrically. So if you want like a bit of a crooked smile, you can use these in any variation you like. Uh, moving in from this is the sharp corner pull. This one is a more vertical smile, so it's going to go more straight up the face, not as wide, and it doesn't affect as much as the cheeks uh, in the outside as the corner pull did. So this is a sharp corner pull, more of a sharp smile, and it's going to affect the, the nasal labial line a bit more, this line down here running down the nose, and it's going to bunch the cheeks up a little more, as opposed to the corner pull, which had a much wider cheek effect and lifted them up around the eyes and the cheeks around here. Uh, moving down, we've got the dimpler. So these dimple controls, they move out wide. So you can see by the, the line there, it's going to pull the corners wide and it also pulls them back into the face, into this kind of dimpling. So it's going to be activating tense uh, tension in the cheeks here. If she had dimples, it would be creating dimples. And it's kind of like that, that fake smile where you don't really bring in the rest of your cheeks to create this kind of smile. It's really deadpan, like you didn't really mean it. You don't find a joke funny. That kind of smile. Uh, the one just below this is the corner depress, which is like a, it's a frowny kind of control. So when you're unhappy with something, you bring these down and you get that kind of unhappy face. Again, all of these can be used asymmetrically. 
and then moving down still we have the stretch control so this again by the direction of the lines it's going to move them down but it's also going to move them wide so it's going to pull the, con the, the corners out to the sides as well as down and it creates tension all around the cheeks down here like that and all of these corner controls can be used together and ones that work really well together, if you want like a nice big grimace, you can use the corner pull and the stretch all together and you get this really big uh, kind of extreme tense grin. And you can have it to varying degrees. If you don't want so much of the uh, corner pull, you can bring those down. And you can see it's very fluid in the motion, increasing these on together. They're all designed to work very well together. Uh, the ones that I would say avoid using um, sharp corner pull and corner depress. Oops, sorry. So these four. So the sharp corner pull by the angle of the line, we're going up the face, which is a very vertical up movement, and these are going to pull the corners down. These are these are quite conflicting controls. So these aren't really designed, and the, the face doesn't really work in that way where these two would be coming on in high values. It's always expected that you will, there will be some crossover during speech because we don't always just turn one muscle off and then turn the next one on. So there will be some kind of crossover, but it would be very unlikely or if not impossible to have a maximum sharp corner pull with a maximum corner depress because these two are just going to kind of force the shape into, force the face into this kind of strange, unnatural looking shape. Um, it's not really a way the face usually moves. But again, the rig is, uh, uh, you know, it can do that if you, if you, if you need it to. Um, okay, so then I'm gonna. That's the that's the corner controls. So I'm gonna move on to the lip controls next. So at the top, coming back here, this is the upper lip raise. So moving these up does what you think. It's gonna lift that lip up, and this is uh, gonna affect the the nose as well. So you get kind of a sneering effect from these. And they sit there at the top, and the ones below, the opposite side, is the lower lip depress. And that's going to pull the lower lip down. And it parts the lips like these. It's also got an effect on the chin. It's just the, the, the muscle dragging that lower lip down. And we have some extra controls down here, which is the chin raise. So this is a is a muscle where the lower the lower lip is pushing up, and it's going to raise the upper lip with it by impact. So you see that the, the pressure is coming from below. It's not a lifting motion from the top lip. There's no uh, there's no muscle activation in the side of the nose like there was with the upper lip raise. This is pure impact from the lower lip pushing the upper lip up. So by that logic, it shouldn't really be used. The upper lip shouldn't the upper lip chin raise shouldn't be used by itself because this is an unnatural movement. You can't just lift your upper lip like this without engaging any kind of muscle. But the lower lip can raise by itself. So if, for example, if I wanted to open the jaw a little. Um, and then use chin raise to close it. That's that's something the human face can do, but we can't use the upper the upper chin raise by itself. It would always be an impact from this. Uh, okay, and the uh, the very last one on the lips is the lips together control. So this one here, when you bring it on, it might look like nothing's happening. You're thinking, okay, this control doesn't work. But this control is only designed to be used when the jaw is open. So this is going to keep the lips together no matter where the jaw is. So without that on, if I open the jaw and take this off, it's going to open those lips again. So no matter where you pull the jaw around, it's going to keep those lips sealed. You get some nice chewing motion going on there. So that's over here. Um, and that's pretty much all of the major lip controls, lip height controls, I would say. Uh, I'm going to move on to now shaping controls. So these will be used a lot. These are the ones down here in this box. Uh, and these are going to be used a lot during speech for things like ch and sh phonemes. You're going to be using a lot of funnel, rolling the lips out like ch, ch. Um, they can be used in all four corners independently. So if you just need a little bit of funnel, if you're going to do like an Elvis lip, raise this. Um, come on, you. 
turn you off. So that's the funnel control that's going to roll the lips out and, to, and uh, uh, towards you. The purse control next to it, this is going to narrow the lips like so, give you like a little pursy, uh, pursy lips there, good for like W shapes, any uh, tight O shapes if the jaws open, if you were using these together, let's say, get like O shapes, like this, and the one next to it, let's close the jaw again, uh, this is the towards control, so this is going to push the lips out. Like this, like a puckering, kind of pouty thing. Uh, all three of these, the funnel, person, towards, they're all designed to be used together. Um, so you can have a varying degrees of, of any of these used together. They, they, they work in all sorts of combinations. Um, so you can ramp them all on if you want to. Get a very big kissy shape. Uh, so they're very, they're very powerful controls, these ones, and you'll be using them a lot. And equally, they can be used with any of these as well. So nothing needs to be used in isolation. It's all designed to be uh, used together. Um, so that's the shape controls down here in the O section. I'm gonna move down the face into these um, kind of tension controls here. So these are gonna be when you like have uh, like lips pressing together. I'll go into that one first, that makes sense. And this is impact of the lips pressing down on one another. So when you tense your lips together, use them here. Uh, this is another control that shouldn't really be used uh, if the lips aren't touching because this is, again, it's an impact control, so it's the pressure and force of your both of your lips pressing together. You shouldn't really be able to do that if your lips are apart. You get this kind of strange shape. It's not natural to do that. But if, for example, the lips were closed and you were still pressing, that's fine. There's impact there. We can use that. Uh, the one to the left of it is the lips bite. This rolls the lips in and over the teeth. So it's going to roll them. And again, if the jaws open, a lot of these work well when the jaws open. So it rolls them over the top of the lips, uh, over the top of the teeth, sorry, in on themselves, like that, covering the teeth. And then this one over on the right is the lips tighten. And this is kind of just like a general tension in the lips. This can be used in all kinds of different shapes if you just need to add tension. It's not really caused by lips pressing together. You can tense your lips when they're apart as well. Um, so that's the lips tighten control over here. And all of these controls, these ones can be used uh, in all four corners. The lips press can be used left and right, but only both together because like I mentioned before, these two are, these two are linked because they can't be used unless the lips are together. So there's no need to have a separation between top and bottom. And the lip sprite can also be used in the four different corners, depending on where you need to roll your lips in. And one extra powerful control I wanted to get into before I move on to the tweakers is the muzzle control. So this one here, right in the center, this is gonna swing the mouth around. So this is great for adding asim to any of your shapes, or if you need to change the height, but you don't want really a, a destructive change, you can change the, the lip heights by moving up and down. So any combination of shapes you can add a little bit of muzzle to. Uh, it's very natural to, to have this kind of moving quite constantly. It will have varying degrees of left and right a lot of the time. Um, and yeah, this, this is this one over here in the middle. Um, okay. And the ones, I'm gonna go into the cheeks area now. So we've done the mouth, that's kind of the majority of the mouth major controls on this board. I will be getting to the uh, tweaker board later because they're more kind of bespoke controls to, for that fine sort of finesse detail. These are the major controls over here. Uh, so off to the sides of the face here, we have the cheek um, suck blow. So this is gonna puff out the cheeks or suck them in. So you're using that big puffy cheeks or sucking them in as if they're uh, you know, she's sucking her mouth, uh, cheeks against her teeth. Um, the lips blow, which is the one down here, it says lips blow at the top of it. This one puffs out just the lips area. So it's more frontal. The air is like front loaded instead of being pushed back at the, at the cheek area. It's more front loaded at the, um, at the lips. It's good for adding like pops to MBPs. If you want to p p that kind of thing, you can use lips blow. It's nice for that. Uh, and also works really well with the suck blow together. So if I was to puff the cheeks out and then 
if the lips were then to puff out, you just completely relaxed and just left all the all the air to be building around the lips as well. You can add these together and it creates a nice combined shape. So that's all of the kind of air related controls. Uh, I'm gonna move over to the tweaker board now. So this one over here, this is for some extra fine detail, like I said before. So for example, this one on the left, this is thickness. I'm not sure if you can read that on this screen grab, but it says thickness at the top here. Um, and this is gonna um, kind of in, uh, increase the thickness uh, horizontally. So it's gonna move the lips towards or back against the teeth. So this is like pulling when you move them together. It's like flattening them, flattening them against the teeth really reducing the amount of volume in the lips and vice versa. If you were to do the other way, it's going to increase the volume of the lips, push them out, really, really thickens them up. Um, this is a, a non-destructive control. So anytime it doesn't change like lip heights or anything. So if I was to have some lip braids on and I just wanted to change the thickness and I was like, actually, no, the, uh, the upper lips changing volume here while it raises, you can do that. And you can see it doesn't change where the lip sits on the teeth. So if you watch this bottom line, you can use this and it's going to stay where you have. So it's very non-destructive control. Uh, in from this is the roll control. So this is going to, it's, it's a little bit like the bite, but it's not as powerful and it's more isolated to the lips themselves instead of like a full mouth shape. So it's kind of localized just to the lips. And uh, again, you can use that in all four corners if you need to. Like that. To the side, this one's going to work better if I have the jaw open as well. We have a corner sharpener. So this is going to pinch the corners. If you need to create maybe like a, a tighter shape in the corners, you can you can pull these together, pinch them for like O shapes. Sometimes you just need a little bit more tension in the corners there. You can use the corner sharpeners for that. And the opposite direction is going to open them wider. It's quite good sometimes if you have a big cryy face. Uh, say if I wanted to, like before, when I showed you the shape with the corner pull and stretch, if you want to put these on big, but you just want that extra bit of kind of um, shaping in the corners to widen them out. Excuse me. Uh, that's the corner sharpens here. And then in from that we have the push pull controls. Uh, this is this is to move the whole the whole mouth um, uh, in the four corners towards or uh, back against the teeth, but it doesn't change the volume of the lips. It just moves the actual distance towards or away from the teeth. Um, that's most of the tweakers addressed over here. There are some extra ones, which we probably wouldn't find too much use for. Um, there's some ones that move the teeth around, but again, we won't really use them in <laughs> in uh, in speech or anything. Your teeth definitely do not move while you talk. Not within the jaw anyway. Um, but if you were, like for, for certain shapes, perhaps you were pushing something to a, to a, a really big extreme and you found some clipping or something because the, the rig was, you, you, can, you can tweak it just like little bits if you need to, to get certain shapes, but or if you just wanted to change the, the base height of the teeth, you could do that from those controls there. Um, you won't find yourself using that very much, but the option is there if you need it. Uh, moving up is these ones called lip shift. So on the corners here, these are very isolated corner movements. So this is again, not to be used as a main shaper. This is more of a tweaker again, if, if you have a very, very bespoke need to have a certain um, shaped angle of corner, uh, say like the corner pulls up, but you want it slightly turned down in the edges, you can come over to the lip shift area around here and change the corners uh, to however, you, however you'd like to. And in the middle, we've got a lip shift uh, left and right. So this is going to move the upper and lower lip left and right. This is not the same as the muzzle either. So the muzzle does the whole mouth and it twists it around the face. This is again, this is a tweaker, should be used uh, for very specific reasons and you can change the upper and lower as you wish. Uh, and then another tweaker that I didn't talk about that is actually sitting on the main board is the mouth stickies because you will be using that a lot but it is a tweaker because it's it's high level detail. And this is when, for example, when your mouth opens, 
and your lips uh, have been stuck together. You know, when you have dry lips and your lips have stuck and then you get that kind of sticky peel as they open. So the mouth sticky area is where you'd create your kind of peels. You can use these ones on the left and right. Um, the ones in the middle here. They do like a, like a zipper style peel. So it's going to come across from the edge and move out wide. So as you'd open, you could turn it off and you'd get like a sticky peel like this. That's, a, that's kind of a quicker way to get around it. I find it the, the best way to get a really nice detail one is to use these 10. So you have five on the upper and five on the lower and they move the from the outside to the inside of the lips. So you can see it's just pinching a very specific area in the corners here and it gives you more finesse over exactly how much you want on. Right the way to the middle if you need it. So if you want like a really distinct asymmetrical peel if one part of the lips open first you could use them like this or sometimes you get parts where the um, just the very middle of the lip seeing it where just certain parts stick um, but you don't need it from like the the middle or uh, for, you know for example if like this is opened up the uh, the inside is stuck still you, you, you get what I mean Let me just turn these off. So that's just stickies over there. Um, moving down the face, so that's that's pretty much all of the mouth related controls I've talked about so far. And then moving down to the very bottom down here, we have some neck controls. So these ones here in the neck stretch, moving these is going to create tension in the uh, in the in the muscles running up and down the neck which work very well with the stretch control. So this is the neck stretch and it works very well with the, with the mouth stretch because when we stretch our mouth out wide, we also get that kind of impact on the neck. Now they're not linked together in this single control because again, it gives you higher fidelity over exactly how much you want. Um, but yeah, they work, they work uh, very well together. The ones to the side of those are the mastoid. So this control kind of like strengthening the neck. This, these ones will be used a lot for kind of head movement more related. So the muscle that runs up and down that connects the head, when you rotate your head around, these kind of mastoids uh, start acting. And then we're going to the side here. So this one is the uh, inhale, exhale. So when we lift and drop, it's like when we're breathing. So if you like big inhale and then exhale, you kind of see the neck inflate and deflate. Uh, the one just in from this one is the digastric, which just moves a little bit under the neck here, under the, under the chin, sorry. And it works really well with tongue. So when if you if you try it and pull your tongue back and down into your mouth, you can feel underneath your chin, you'll feel a little lump kind of grow. And that one is down here. So if you if you kind of connect it to tongue movement, it can really help make uh, speech look look very believable because you can see it's not just from tongue and mouth; it's kind of affecting the whole neck as well. Um, in that same vein, the throat up down control. This is a female character, so the Adam's apple is not as pronounced, but this is basically the Adam's apple control, moving that up and down, which we do a lot for speech. Uh, it's usually pitch orientated when we talk high; the um, throat will go up, talk low, kind of comes down. Uh, and the one at the very bottom is the swallow control. So this is if you do a big gulp and it's kind of all built into one motion. So from zero, from the left to the right, from zero to one, it does a full swallow motion and it does the same back. So it's kind of repeated from halfway point to the end and you get like a gulp like that. Um, okay, that's the neck controls there. I'm going to show you the tongue now since we just talked about the tongue. So I'm going to open the mouth for this. And inside here, there is a tongue control. Oh, it's a little dark in the mouth there. I'll stick it out so you can see. So there's the tongue peeping out there, the shadows. And we have very different, um, different types of controls to control different parts of the tongue. The one on the left here is kind of like the main a full body tongue movement. The one just in from this in this box is kind of a more central, so it's kind of moving from the middle of the tongue. And the one on the end is the very tip. 
So it's just going to flick up that little tip there. And they all move in uh, left to right, up and down. You can get all kinds of different shapes with this thing. It's really fun. Obviously, you can <laughs> break it if you need to. But yes, it's nice and wriggly. It's a good looking tongue. Done with him. Um, that's the tongue control. Um, and that's everything lower face related. So I'm going to move up towards the nose now. So we have the nose control here, right in the center. This moves up and down in the TY. You get like a nose scrunch. Like this. And it impacts the brows. It pulls all the creases in around the, the inside of the eyes there. And it moves in the TX as well for a nose flare. So when you kind of flare your nose, you can do it in the TX. And you can do them asymmetrically if you need to as well. Uh, you can decouple. You see the, the brow movement coming in from the nose flare there. You can decouple that if you want. Uh, it's quite natural for that to happen in, in motion. But I mean, stylistically, if you just didn't want the brows to come down, you can turn these controls off here, which are which are up near the, near the eyebrows, but kind of like tying the nose in this angle. So if I turn them off, We'll see now when I grab the nose, it's not going to affect the brows. So it's just isolated to the nose now. And you can do you can do varied degrees. So you can you can do halfway if you just didn't want it as strong. Sorry, I did miss that click. So it's going to move them a bit, but not as much as maximum. You get the idea. And over on the tweaker board, so there's an extra level to the nose over here which is the nasal labial. So this is going to increase the creasing down the side of the nose and mouth area down here. Like that. And now I think it's time to move on to the eyes. Um, so moving up the face as we were, the ones just down here is the squint control. So this is going to increase the height of the lower lids. So move them up. It's kind of squinting the eyes up like this, narrows them. Uh, next to those is the cheek raise. This does similar. It does raise the um, the eyelids as well, but it actually is caused by the cheeks pushing up. So there's a bigger impact around the outside of the brows and around the the crow's feet area. It's uh, it's pushing up and having a large effect on the whole of the upper sides of the face. It can be used together as most of this rig can, so you can have squint and cheek pull on together. And the ones here, just next to the eyes, is the blink. So if you move them down, it's going to blink. If you move them up, it's going to widen the eyes. So you get your nice, nice blinks there. Again, they're not just isolated to the eyelids. It has motion around uh, the eyes, brows, and the cheek areas. And these ones here uh, above this, this is like a tweaker control for when the eyes are closed. This is called lid press. So sometimes you might notice it in, in people when they have their eyes closed, they seem to do these kind of fluttery blinks while their eyes are still closed. So it's like a lid pressing together, but it's not actually opening or closing. It's just increasing in tension. So your lids are pressing together. And I'm going to move on to the eye direction. So right in the center is the eye direction control on the, on the face board. So when you move this, it's going to move both eyes together. And it's got nice soft eye approach. So it's going to move those lids. There's no counterbalancing. You don't have to reposition your eyelids every time the eye moves because that's already built into the rig. And that's going to work with your eyes are shut. It's going to keep all that nice um, organic movement as you move the eyes around underneath the lids. Bit of REM sleeping. Uh, if you do so wish to make your um, actor cross-eyed, you can by using the left and right eye independently. Which then, if you do add those in, you can still drive them together with the center control, like so. If someone's just got a, a lazy high eye, perhaps you can use that stylistic choice. Up to you. Uh, there's some tweaker controls above these. 
for the pupil dilation. So if you just come into a, a very dark room and you need wide eyes, or vice versa, if it's very bright, it's going to narrow the eyes. There, there. Uh, this is a convergence control here. So this is going to slightly give you a, a more centered look as if you were looking at a pencil like in front of your face or something. Uh, and that's the eye direction. That's the eye direction on the face board. There is a, a different option, which can be very, very useful when working in scenes. If you need to uh, like track an object or if you just need a, like, a, like a world space look at control, we can turn this switch on down here, down in the switchboard. If we turn that on, uh, it's going to swap over from the onboard face control to this kind of global look at control here. So we can see now that the flip, uh, the switch is flipped. This control no longer affects the eyes. So we're kind of switching the inputs, and it puts it onto this one here. So this uh, big red box around the outside. If we move this around, it's going to make the eyes follow wherever this one is. So this this control lives in world space, which is extremely useful if you have uh, a scene set up and you need it to track uh, an object that's moving around a scene or a person that's walking around um, and you don't want to have to kind of eyeball it from the controls. You can see exactly where the eyes are pointed and what they're going to be looking at, uh, especially with these kind of laser beams coming out of the eyes here. There's no question about where the actor is looking. Uh, it's very, very useful for, for being accurate with your uh, direction. Uh, there's these also these two inner circles here, which move the eyes as well, but they can be moved uh, independently. So if you need a you know one eye tracking something while another eye tracks the floor, if that's what you want, you can do it. And the best use that I find for these center controls is to use them for kind of subtle eye darts. So for example, when we're talking to someone and looking at them in, in the face, we don't tend to stare them you know like stare intently and don't move we, we have all these kind of subtle eye darts that go on but perhaps they're walking around and you want to maintain your tracking of that person you've locked this onto their face as they walk around but you want to keep the eyes alive and have these kind of subtle darts you can do that with these little ones in the middle all the while the uh, the overall direction is the same so you can move these and then move them on top to get some extra subtleties flicking from eye to eye perhaps as the other person talks or maybe down to the mouth but you still want to be tracking the face it's really really powerful for that and it will help keep your characters looking nice and alive um, we also have the convergence option down here which is the same as the convergence on the face board when you turn that on it gives you kind of this centered focus point right in the middle so it's kind of bringing the eyes together um, into the center which is good for anything that's going to be close up to your characters. For example, like if uh, I don't know, a fly is buzzing around her face and she's tracking it, and it's gonna it's gonna feel like it's really close and like on the tip of her nose almost. It's really good just to get that that extra focus. And then you turn it off, she kind of goes back into the distance. So that's there if you need to, and you can animate that on and off. Um, and that's all there is really about the actual look at control. This switch down here on the bottom can be animated, so you can flick between the onboard face control and the look at control um, just whenever you like. So it will maintain any data underneath. Anything you've animated on there doesn't get deleted or removed. It keeps it, and it just kind of changes the override of what's controlling the eyes. So you can animate them both and then flick between the two depending on what your needs are. If you need to be super accurate and track something, then use the. I would use the look at. If you need to be, for example, following some footage that you've recorded, it's maybe going to be easier to use this. Uh, but it's there, the options there for you, whatever whatever your needs might be. Uh, I'm going to move on to the brows. So up the face at the very top, we have the brow control. So at the very top, we've got the brow raises. So this is going to lift the eyebrows up in four controls. So you've got the outer brow, the inner brow, inner brow, outer brow. If you want an eyebrow that's going to say, say what? You can just raise one. Or if you need to be very worried, you can raise these and bring the outers down. Gives you a kind of worried look. If you want to increase that, we can go down here and get the brow down control. This is going to pull the brows down. So these ones lift, that one lowers. They can be used together for different effects. So you can see there with them up, you can see it's going to give you a worry. With them down, it's going to give you angry. And if you want to increase that angle further, 
We've got the, the brow laterals here, which bring the eyebrows in in the center, and it's going to increase the tension in the middle there. Like so. Excuse me. And the very last thing I want to talk about is uh, this last tweaker over here on the right, which is a full upper face squeeze control. So using this is going to really, it's like, a, it's like a full upper face control. So it moves the brows, the cheeks, all the surrounding area. And this is like, it's really great if you, if you have like a very tight squeezed face. So for example, if you have your eyes shut and you're scrunching everything down, you can just max this out and you get like real load of tension all around the cheeks and eyebrows all in one control. So that's that's nice to increase if you need a, a super extreme like tense face or you see you can use it with cheek raise increase it further. Um and that's that's the whole rig. I'm going to just briefly show you through some uh some examples of like how to make certain expressions just to give you an idea of what kind of combinations I'd use in certain environments. Um, so I'm just going to start off with uh, like a like a super angry rage face. So I'm just going to drop the jaw a little bit. I'm going to increase some upper lip raise to show some teeth. Increase some stretching to get some tension in the lower lip. Oh, I've still got the tongue sticking out. Let me pull that back in. Um, Bring in some corner pull to activate the cheek area. Drop the lower lip down. Show some more teeth. And if you want to increase some anger on the upper face, bring up that nose, start bringing in tension there. Again, bring in all this anger in the whole face. And it's just kind of additive, so we can just keep bringing in things that we need. We find things are lacking. Uh, might want some more tension around the sides of the nose, so I'm going to go for some nasolabial. Deepen that crease there. Corner's a bit lower, perhaps, so I'm going to bring in some corner to press. Or perhaps she's gritting her teeth, and I want lots of clench. So I'm going to activate the muscles at the side of the face. You see all this anger coming in now. Uh, to increase it even further, start bringing in some neck. You see all this tension starting to build, just adding these controls together. And you can get some really intense looking faces quite quickly with a few controls. Uh, obviously, you can dive in further and really make this super intricate. Um, but, you know, just to just to show you how things could be transformed. So I'm going to make a turn this into disgusted. So if she's just really displeased with something. She's seen something really icky and she doesn't like it. Maybe bringing in some of the squints here, perhaps not as much of the stretch. A bit more corner to press. Maybe some asymmetry would be nice. She's really not happy with whatever she's seeing. That's gross over there. I don't like that. Don't want the neck on though. Uh, or perhaps I want to turn this into super scared. So she's going to be fearing for her life now. Excuse me. So I'm going to alleviate some of that tension in the brows. Start bringing them up in the middle. And I maybe want to open the eyes really wide, show the fear coming through. And the nose up. Nose up tends to be a more angry thing. Nose down, you get the kind of scared thing coming through. Bring in some cheek raise with this. Hopefully you're keeping up with what I'm doing here. So just, just kind of tweaking these poses and just exploring some expressions with you. Just to kind of show you how the rig can be worked together. Um, for example, our happy smile is always good. So if I take off this and go back to the smile, because the smile is a complex one. And it's always tricky to, to really nail down and know which controls you need to hit. Uh, I'm just going to zero out everything. Um, bear with me one second while I just zero out. Oh, never mind. 
do it manually. Center this back in there. So, okay, I'm going to make a happy face. So, start with corner pull, bringing these corners nice out and wide. You'll be thinking, well, that doesn't look very happy. And it's because we don't just smile with our mouths, it's got to go up the face. So, we need the cheek raise being activated, soften the eyes off a little bit, get a bit of squint going, smiling with the eyes. It's already starting to look a little bit happier. Maybe we want to drop down the lower lip a little bit, show some lower teeth. Raise the upper lip a touch. Maybe she's laughing. Going to drop that down. It's coming together. Oh, I've still got clench on. That's not going to help a smile. Maybe a slight lift in the mid brows. You see how it's just softening her up? Just these little touches. And now we've got a happy face. so uh, hopefully this has been useful um, sorry if I've waffled on too much but yeah that's the rig thank you for watching okay goodbye everyone